thanks for coming to this one. We are gonna be talking about managing Slack at scale. Uh, my name is Jim Ray, and I work here on our developer relations team. I work primarily with our enterprise and large enterprise customers, and I work a lot with engineers that are building internal tools just for their organization. If that sounds like you, please find me and uh, let's chat afterwards. Um, but today I want to talk about some of our APIs for scaling Slack along with your growing organization. Um, so by now you've no doubt heard that communication is at the heart of what we do at work. And the Slack platform is all about creating this central communication hub for your team. So whether that's increasing transparency across your org using something like public channels, uh, creating this automatic and always growing corpus and history of all of your company's communication, or using apps to bring more conversational context to the communication that your team is doing all the time, Slack is what is gonna bring all of this together. So um, Slack has always worked great for small teams and for startups. And last year we launched our enterprise grid product. And so now we're able to help organizations with tens of thousands of team members do their very best work. But as an organization grows, uh, it faces a slightly different set of challenges than maybe one of these smaller companies or, or maybe the, the, the challenges that you had when you were a startup. And Slack itself becomes something that needs to be managed more directly. So we wanna talk about a set of APIs that you may be less familiar with that will help you keep your Slack org humming along nicely. So specifically, I'd like to introduce the e-discovery and DLP APIs, uh, our fairly new audit logs, and then I'm going to bring up one of our engineers and he's gonna talk about using Skim to manage the information about the people in your organization. So first up is a duo of APIs uh, for managing the security and compliance of your enterprise grid org. Uh, these are called eDiscovery and DLP. So the first thing to know about these is that they are enterprise grid only. So if you need a compliance solution, this is a great reason to move up to enterprise grid. And these APIs allow the administrators within a Slack organization to discover and secure the, any of the data that is in a Slack org. Uh, this includes public channels, uh, direct messages, private channels, and even files uploaded to Slack. And so while these two APIs are often grouped together out in the marketplace, uh, they actually do slightly different things. So eDiscovery is broadly all about uh, this process for discovering and isolating information that might need to be used later um, for in a legal context or for legal reasons. Uh, so regulated industries or governments often require an e-discovery solution to be in place uh, in order to keep electronic data secure and, and in order to actually keep it around for later discovery process. Uh, DLP stands for data loss prevention, and this is similar, but this is actually a technique for identifying sensitive information, such as employee or customer data. And then a DLP solution will actually let you specify a query uh, so that you can proactively remove or redact that information so that it's not able to be uh, accessed or compromised later on. So you might set up a query that says something like, look for a string of letters that look like a social security number and then automatically remove or redact that information. So our, our e-discovery and our DLP APIs, they're, they're built primarily to work uh, directly with e-discovery and DLP partner applications. And if you work in a regulated or a government agency, you probably recognize some of these names. Uh, that said, if you are interested in building your own uh, discovery or DLP solution, uh, we can actually help you out with that. Um, we'd, we'd need to enable some things on the back end there, but uh, we can enable this for custom applications as well if you're interested in building your own. And uh, if your company builds an e-discovery or a DLP solution and you're interested in getting on this slide, then come talk to us a little later. Uh, next up is the audit logs API. Um, now this is the newest addition to the Slack platform family. And these are there to sort of keep a watchful eye on your org. So like e-discovery and DLP, uh, the audit logs are currently for enterprise grid uh, orgs only. 
And these are perfect if you've ever wanted to store data about your Slack workspace or your org in an SIEM tool or you want to get more insights about how your team is actually using Slack. And they're also ideally suited for watching for potential security issues by being able to track things like user logins. So the way that w the, the audit logs work is uh, they generate this, uh, this log that is uh, read-only, and they create events that provide metadata about the workspaces on an org. So each audit event uh, contains an actor which takes an action on an entity within a certain context. So for example, when a user logs into a workspace, they are the actor who takes the action of logging into that workspace. So here are some of the more common events that you can track with audit logs. Um, you can keep watch over some big changes like a new workspace was created within your org or you know, something slightly less eventful like a new alias was added to an existing emoji. And uh, we're gonna continue to build out the audit log events that you can track um, as we continue to grow and evolve the platform. And so finally, there is our Skim API. Now, Skim may be something that you're already familiar with. It's an open standard that's been around for um, almost a decade now. And Skim is available on both our Plus Planned and, our, and on Enterprise Grid. Uh, so Skim is a RESTful API, and it, it supports the standard REST verbs. And with Skim, you can automatically sync the data about your team inside of Slack with an identity provider that you might already be using or some sort of internal user directory. And you can, uh, the real power though is that you can provision and deprovision team members, you can update their profile information, and you can manage user groups all programmatically. So now I would like to introduce Arka Ganguly, who's an engineer on our identity team, and he's gonna cover using Skim in depth. Thanks. All right, thanks Jim for that great intro. Um, my name's Arka, I, I work on the enterprise identity team at Slack. Uh, our team is mostly responsible for ensuring that companies of all sizes, large and small, can safely manage and deploy Slack at scale. Um, we've built many of the APIs that Jim previously touched on, uh, including the Skim API, which I'll be taking a pretty deep dive into. Okay, but before I get started into that, um, what, oh, oops, okay. Uh, does anybody in the audience actually know what Skim is? Okay, I saw some hands go up, that's good. For those of you that don't know, it's pretty simple. Skim is just a standard for exchanging user identity information between software systems. I know, exciting. But really, this is pretty important in today's day and age because just think of all the different software systems you use to get your work done on a daily basis. Slack might just be one of those tools, but you might be using like 10 other things on a daily basis to be just able to do your job. Um, and Skim is just uh, the standard that says how the schema of exchanging user identity between these systems should be like. Specifically at Slack, the Skim API can be used to provision, deprovision, and update user information programmatically. Now, that's great, but why do we even need this API? Like, you can go into the Slack admin right now and you can add new members, you can easily deactivate members, you can even update some information about members uh, in your Slack workspaces. Well, the problem is, um, this is great for when you're just managing a few users uh, using your Slack instance, but really what companies see is that they need to deploy Slack to you know their tens and thousands of employees at this company, and they have no way of going in and doing this manually. Like they're not gonna go in and add 10,000 users manually via the UI. So we need an API for that. But also, um, we need to be able to automate a lot of this uh, process because things change all the time. Like employee titles are always changing, their departments are changing, their role in the company is changing. And you wanna be able to sync this information down to every single system that that employee has access to so that you always have the most up-to-date information everywhere. So if we take a look at what an example setup looks like, um, this is what many of our customers that use the Skim API might have. Uh, the thing to know here is that there's really one source of truth. There's just the information directory, which is where you enter all your employee information and update information. Ideally, what you want is any changes you make to a directory sync down to each of these different software applications that that employee uses to get their job done on a daily basis. 
this is great for consistency, but it's also great for just security. Um, you need to be able to know that when you deactivate someone at, at your directory, that they were actually deactivated in Slack and that they have lost access to that system. Skim is great for this because it's like the common language that talks between all these software systems. So you can just build one application or connector that consumes this identity information and you can connect it to as many different software applications as long as they support Skim. Um, the other thing to note is that the Skim API at Slack is actually a RESTful. This is a distinguishing factor because most of our regular APIs are actually not RESTful APIs. Now, why do we make the Skim API RESTful? Well, firstly, it's a standard, and the standard says that it has to be a RESTful API, so we didn't really have much choice there. But the other good thing about it being a RESTful API is that developers know what to expect when interacting with this API. Like, if you're a developer, you're probably already familiar with the HTTP verbs, and you know what those HTTP error codes mean. And having a standard like Skim allows you to very easily and predictably build applications against this API. Um, we're gonna be talking a bit more about HTTP verbs later on, so I just wanna do like a quick refresher. I know everyone in the room probably already knows, but so our Skim API supports the standard HTTP verbs, uh, get, put, patch, delete, post. Um, a get request is just to you know, get a, an existing resource from the server. A post request is used to create new resources on the server. Put and patch are used to update information about a resource on the server. They're slightly different in that a put request will overwrite all fields with whatever is sent along with the request, whereas a patch request is an incremental update to a specific field. And finally, a delete request is just a delete. So if we take a look at uh, how this all fits into our Skim API, um, you can see here the three high-level use cases that we talked about, which is adding new employees, updating employee information, and deleting employees can all be done pretty simply just by sending uh, these HTTP requests. Um, so firstly, we're gonna send a post request, in this example anyway, to our Skim users endpoint, and that's gonna return us uh, like a 200, uh, it sh it's actually a 201 created response, but anyway. Uh, it's gonna return us a successful response, and it will give us a unique identifier for this user in Slack. That's that UID. Um, and then we can use this unique identifier to make any subsequent requests, such as patch or put or delete, and update information about that specific user profile in Slack. We're gonna be digging deeper into each of these cases a little bit more and seeing actually what the payloads look like, but here's like a very high level of how basically most of these skim connectors work. Because if you're using an identity provider at your company, you most likely are already doing this behind the scenes uh, because we already have skim, skim connectors for identity providers like Okta, OneLogin, and so on. So the first case we're gonna be looking at is onboarding users. This is pretty important because you've just bought Slack, you want your employees to start using it, but you need to be able to give them access to it. Um, now again, you could do this manually via the UI, but as we talked about, that is not feasible for larger companies, so you might wanna use the Skim API and do it programmatically. What that might look like is something like this. You would, let's say you have a new employee starting, his name's Arca, and he's an intern at your company, so you need to add him to your employee directory. So you do that, and then you wanna create this user in Slack. So you can use our Skim API to send a post request with all the relevant information, and it'll create that user profile in Slack. The important thing to note here is that all these fields we're sending, such as username, name, display name, title, these are all set by the Skim standard. Like Slack didn't make any of this up. There's no ambiguity here. Any other system that you integrate with will also support the exact same schema. So as a result of that post request, you might have a Slack profile created with the pieces of information you've provided us. Um, great, that works awesome. Now let's say we wanna update these profiles, right? Because that's also pretty common, because most of the time uh, you are not just gonna wanna create users and forget about them. You still need to update their emails maybe if that changes, if their name changes. In this case, let's say we wanna give uh, Arca a profile picture and maybe we wanna change his title. Oh. On the slides, I see the title and ID are gone now, <laughs> but those were very important. <laughs> anyway, um, you would send a request like this. In this case, let's just focus on the photos. Um, so as you can see here, we're sending a photos attribute and we're sending a patch request to the specific identifier for Arca in Slack, which is that WID thing there. 
So then Slack receives this request and we know exactly what user you're talking about and what field you want to update about this user. So as a result of that, you can see now my profile in Slack was updated with the profile picture and my title and some other things were updated too, which we didn't see in the other slide. Anyway, this is also another cool feature that we have in Slack called custom profile field syncing. So the title is just one of the fields you can sync. Uh, you can actually set up up to 25 fields that you can automatically sync every time something changes in your employee directory or identity provider automatically. Great, and the last use case we're gonna look at is offboarding users, because people leave companies all the time and you wanna make sure that they have lost access to Slack um, and you wanna be confident in that because uh, that's a security risk if they didn't. So there's two ways we allow you to uh, offboard users using the Skim API. One of them is you can send a patch request. Again, the, <laughs> the text is missing, but if you send a patch request with the active attribute to false, it would actually deactivate the user in Slack. Or you can send a delete request and it would have the same effect of, of deactivating the user ID you provided in Slack which will in turn make their account uh, look like it's a deactivated account. One thing to note is that Slack never actually deletes uh, user accounts, so we just disable them. You can always reactivate these accounts later if you'd like. So that was a look at how you might use uh, the Skim users API to, to manage users individually. But again, that's not really feasible for companies at scale. So we offer user groups too. And user groups are just simply a group of users and they support the exact same operations you can do with the user's Skim API, but just in bulk. So you would create a, a group by sending a post request to the Skim groups API, and that would give you a unique ID for that group, and then you can add users to these, to these groups and make bulk updates by sending patch put requests with the group ID. So you could you know, have a, imagine having a group for like full-time employees, and maybe contractors, and maybe interns, and maybe you wanna do different things with those groups. Maybe some groups get access to some workspaces, uh, some groups don't, and you can do that all really easily using our uh, user groups API, which allow you to basically do all of those things I talked about earlier, but just for a bunch of users at once. Um, that was a quick look at how our Skim API enables large companies to manage user lifecycle at Slack. And uh, yeah, I'm happy to talk about any of these things here after uh, you can come find me outside. Uh, thanks for listening. Yeah, we made it.